witnesses to Jesus Christ's birth. Tonight, we consider the witness of the Apostle John. Now, John became the senior teaching elder in the church at Ephesus. He ministered for a very long time there. He grew old in Ephesus preaching the gospel. And it's probably in Ephesus that John composed the account of Jesus that bears his name that we read and love so much in the church. It was a story he, have t he told, he must have told many, many times, year after year after year, as people came to the church to learn from John, who was an eyewitness to Christ himself. He wrote it down. And this is how John's story began. And this is how John's story <laughs> began. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own didn't receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, this is he of whom I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Come on in, all of you. <laughs> Gather around. Oh, it's good to see you. We, we've run out of benches, perhaps... Uh, some of you young folks could sit on the floor. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, I commend you for your interest in the way. As you can see, we're quite an eclectic group. We've got uh, men and women. We've got Romans and Greeks, people from all over. Young folks and uh, older folks like us. We've got... Um, people from all walks of life. Now in this class, we will uh, we'll teach you, we're going to review the laws of Moses, and we're going to then talk about the gospel of Jesus. We're going to look at a special prayer that he taught us to pray, and we're going to summarize things that we believe. But every time we have one of these classes, they ask me to begin, because I was one of the ones who was with him, and yes, it was a long time ago now. Jesus, uh, at the time, he must have been in his early 30s, and I couldn't have been more, much more than half of that. I was the youngest. I think he felt like he had to watch over me a little bit more, but that was good, because I got to go some places other people didn't. Now, they, they call us Christians for a reason. And that's because we are all about Jesus Christ. So before we get into anything else, I'm going to tell you his story the way that I remember it for the next few weeks. The problem is, if I, what do I talk about? Because 
if I told you everything he did, I mean, all the books in the world wouldn't hold uh, what I'd have to say. I'm not even sure how to start. Where do I begin to tell the story of Jesus? Matthew never had a problem with that. Matthew was um, a little more theological, and he was very interested in showing Jesus as the fulfillment of Israel's mission and the covenant. So he liked to connect the dots between Jesus' father and uh, David and Abraham. So he started with Joseph. Luke has also written about this. I don't know if you knew this, but Luke was a, a physician. Now you ask a doctor when life starts, and he's going to say at uh, conception. So he started with Mary, Jesus' mother. It makes sense. It makes sense to start the story of Jesus uh, at his birth. Um, have any of you, have you heard about the circumstances of his birth? No? Oh, well, you're in for a treat. It's a magnificent, a wonderful story. And the most important thing about it is that it's true. Uh, we worship Jesus. We follow him as our king. And yet he was born in remarkably humble circumstances. Actually, in an animal shed, there were angels singing, but they were singing to shepherds. Let's just say it was a very humble situation. Yes? Yes, yes. There were some expensive gifts given. Uh, actually, they weren't kings. They were, they were Persian uh, magi. They were scholars. They came, uh, and they were there. That's true. And uh, what did they look like? <laughs> I hadn't been born yet. I don't know what they looked like. But what's important to understand, we'll look at all that stuff later. What's important really to understand is that when Jesus was born, God Almighty took on human flesh. For the first time, God really lived among us. Now, his name had been dwelling, we believe, in our temple and in the tabernacle before that. But, but when Jesus was born, the glory of God was revealed to mankind. No, 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 he didn't glow or anything like that. There no, no thunderclaps. But, but as Jesus grew into a man, it became clear that he was the kind of person that God wanted mankind to be. It's what we were made for. There was no sin in him. I was with him for three years. Almost every day. There was no sin in him. His family believed in him. No sin in him. Every accusation against him was either false or else it was true. They said he blasphemed because he was God, but... He was. No, that, no, no, you misunderstand me. That's not, it's not it. He, it, it. I don't mean that he made you feel guilty because he was so good. That's not how you felt. He made you feel, he made you feel like you wanted to be like him. Very much. Now, the law of Moses, and we'll look at that. The law of Moses tells us exactly what God expects of us. And that will make you feel guilty, I'm sure. But there was a, there was a peace to be found with him he was full of grace he was full of truth yeah sometimes truth does hurt but there was so much grace with him that he took the hurt away and in its place in its place this sense that god was who and where you wanted to be you wanted to be with him his uh, his will is what you want for yourself and the life that he gives is the life that you want to live forever. So Matthew and Luke were right. Starting with his birth really is a good place to start. But, but Peter didn't think that. Peter was different. Peter, Peter was not uh, quite the theologian Matthew wanted to be, and he, he wasn't as thorough as Luke. Peter was a man of action, and he, he, he preferred to talk about things that he had personally experienced so when he tells the story, and I've looked at his memoirs that Mark has written down, when he tells the story, he starts uh, where Jesus' ministry began and where he met him, and that was uh, with John the Baptist because uh, Peter's brother was a disciple of John, and he introduced Peter to Jesus. So he starts to talk about John. Uh, same name, different person. John the Baptist came. John was a man sent from God. And his, his job was to prepare the way for Christ by being his witness. You see, in our, in our culture, in our background, it's very important that, that anyone who speaks the truth have a witness 
to what he is saying. And Jesus was going to say some really amazing things about God and about us and about himself. And God the Father thought it was very important that someone who knew Jesus and who could see the light of God in him would prepare the way by being his witness. Now John was not that light. He was very clear about that. But he saw it. And he testified to it. God's light for mankind had arrived in a person and that person was Jesus. You know, each one of you, each one of you here, you're here because somebody bore witness to you, like John did. Somebody, somebody who, who could not give you the light, but knew where you could find it. They testified to him, didn't they? And you're here. You're either searching for the light or maybe you found it. If God enlightens your heart and you join with us, then in time, you are going to be declaring God's light to others. You're not going to be able to give it to them, but you're going to be able to tell them where to find it. Peter was right too. That's a good place to start, to tell the story of Jesus. You start with his witnesses. You could start by talking about those who first told you about him. In other words, you could start telling the story of Jesus by telling your story. That's what Peter liked to do. I can't count how many times I've told the story. I know him, and it's a good way to begin. But you know, having said all that, I think the story of Jesus starts further back. Further back than John the Baptist. Further back even than Mary and Joseph and all the dots connecting them back to David and Abraham and all that. I think when you, when you tell the story of Jesus, you really have to go all the way back. All the way back to the beginning. Before Adam was formed out of the dust of the ground. And before there were birds flying in the sky or snow in the mountains or, or foam lapping against the, the shore. Even before the morning stars sang. Back all the way to the beginning. Before anything was made. Hmm? Nothingness? Who said anything about nothingness? No. God, God has always been there. God is all, he fills all things. You know, the universe is very small compared to God. Hmm? Lonely? Who said anything about God being lonely? Now, God is one. There's only one God. That is true. But God is all sufficient. He doesn't need the likes of you or me to cure some loneliness. God's never been lonely. I like to say that God is love. It doesn't mean that love is God, but God is love. And that means eternally he is love. Now, it takes more than one person to love. To love, you have to you love another person. We know three persons who together are the one God, and their love is perfect, and it's eternal. Now, if Jesus is the fusion of God and mankind, then you could say that Jesus began in the womb of Mary at a certain place, certain time. But the divine person who became Jesus, he didn't begin there. His story goes back long before he received a human name. Back to the beginning of all things. What shall we call him? Back at the beginning. You know, when people ask me to, to describe Jesus to them, I think, well, how can I describe in a few words a person who is complete and whole and healthy? And I think, I think about uh, something Jesus used to say about his, his heavenly father. He said that um, he only wanted to accomplish the things that his father wanted to accomplish. He said that he only wanted to say the things that his father wanted to say. Jesus was born so that God's promises, so that his words might be fulfilled, come into being. So back at the beginning, when the father thought, let there be light and will the stars and the earth into being. And when he willed to create uh, a never ending, always unfolding story of life. Back there at the beginning, the one that I knew as Jesus was with God and he was God. And whatever the Father wanted, 
He spoke into existence. He was God's word. And through him, everything was spoken into existence and there's nothing that exists that he didn't make. He's always been and he always will be about accomplishing his father's will. The father wants to create a new humanity, glorious and like him. Jesus came to make that happen. Well, those are some of the different ways we could start to talk about the story of Jesus. In the beginning, when uh, he was God's word, declaring, let there be light, or, or at his uh, birth, when the stars conspired to lead a path of light to his door, or when his witness was first heard from John or, or whoever spoke to you, whoever told you that the light that lightens every man is coming into the world. I can tell you who it is. More and more every day, people recognize that light and they receive him. They receive him for who he is. People who understand darkness and they know what it's like to live in it and how lonely it is. Jesus banishes our darkness by making us God's children. I was the only disciple that was there at, at the cross. I was standing next to his mother. And um, not long before he died, he, he spoke to her and said, uh, John, he's, he's your son. And then he looked at me and he said, she's your mother. I thought at first he just wanted me to take care of her. But I realized that he had made me part of his family. That's what he does. That's what he does with everyone who receives him for who he is and believes in him. He, he makes them part of his divine family. God and mankind together. It's wonderful. He gives us the right to regain a relationship with God that mankind lost a long time ago. He gives us the right to come home. And right now he's building a home for us to come home to. Friends, may God the Holy Spirit open your eyes to see this light. No one's ever seen God. Can't see God. He's spirit. He's not flesh. But God the one and only who's now at his side, he's made him known. Well, that's enough for this time. We'll tell you more of the story later. We have this tradition here every Christmas Eve. Uh, we start with one candle, we dim the lights down, uh, and everybody has a candle, I hope, and we all, we all have a flame. And uh, if, if you've never been here before, we're, we're not trying an experiment to 